Welcome to the market outlook for next week, which is starting July 29th. And if you thought last week was crazy, next week gets double. Not only do we have four mega cap earnings reporting next week, we also have FOMC rate decision. So lots of things going on. And again, this makes it very difficult to pick a direction. And that's why I've been suggesting to you that splitter allocation uh, in two for the week, take some trades on Monday or Tuesday, and then save everything for Friday. Because by the time Friday rolls around, most of the macroeconomic events and earnings for that week have already passed. So that allows you to either hedge or balance your portfolio or double down on your trade if your uh, market direction was right on Monday or Tuesday. So next week continues on that theme. Let's look at the earnings calendar first. So Monday we get some respite. McDonald's that's in our watch list. So F5 in our watch list. So there are a bunch of stocks from our watch list reporting earnings almost on a daily basis, but the real market movers are here. So let's look at Tuesday. So Tuesday, Microsoft, huge market mover, huge. I mean, not only is Microsoft the second largest component by weight in NASDAQ and S&P 500, it's also the third heaviest component in Dow Jones. I mean, who would think, I mean, what is the tech stock doing in Dow Jones? But it's there and it's the third biggest component in Dow Jones. So you can imagine the impact that just Microsoft will have on the entire market on Tuesday, and that is after market close. So that's Microsoft. And of course we have AMD, which is riding the wave, the AI wave and uh, the Nvidia wave. So AMD will affect the chip sector, but because Microsoft earnings are lined up for the same day, I think AMD's uh, effect on the markets will be overshadowed by Microsoft. So that's Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we have meta earnings. And if you remember, I'll remind you, I think it was two earning seasons ago. Markets, QQQ had gone up a lot and it was taking a dive. And meta came out with blowout earnings and that reversed the market direction in literally one day. We got two massive gap ups and QQQ never returned back. So that's the impact that these mega caps have on these um, on the markets. So Microsoft will move the markets on Tuesday heavily. And then comes Meta the next day. And that is followed by Thursday, which gets even more crazier with Apple, the big Apple and Amazon reporting earnings. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day, we have one of these mega caps lined up for their earnings reports. So just get ready for some ridiculous amount of craziness next week. Now, if you think this is enough, let me show you something else. Let me switch to the uh, macroeconomic calendar for next week. So next week is, I don't think I've seen any week in recent memory that is so packed with market moving events. So we have all those crazy earnings. And now if you look at the macroeconomic calendar, we have ADP employment coming out on Wednesday. And as you know, the week where there's a lot of employment data comes out, like ADP employment, and there's, uh, let me show you, there's a bunch of other stuff. Employment report, hourly wages on Friday. So these weeks, are huge for the markets. So the thing is, so not only are we getting crazy earnings next week, the week is lined up on a, like literally on a daily basis, you are going to get some kind of jobs data which will move the markets. So Monday is the only day where you get to relax and Tuesday things start heating up. In the morning you have job openings, then after market close, you, you have Microsoft earnings. And Wednesday, ADP employment data before market open, that's a huge market mover. And that is followed by FOMC interest rate decision. So if you 
remove earning season, if you remove employment data, if you go back to history and just look at any particular week where there is just one event, which is the FOMC decision, that event, you could expect markets to move two to even 3% in a day. So that's the impact of FOMC interest rate decision and Fed's uh, and Powell's conference. But next week, that is just a small part of all the craziness that is happening. So get ready for that on Wednesday. So it craziness starts in the morning. So re remember, Tuesday after market close, Microsoft would have reported its earnings. So that would cause a massive market reaction. And then the following day is when that re reaction would really manifest itself. We start the day off with ADP employment data. That is followed by FOMC rate decision. That is followed by um, Powell's conference. So guessing market direction next week is a fool's errand in my opinion. So what I'll be doing is my plan for next week is like usually if you must have noticed that if I know that there are market moving events scheduled for a week, I like, I like to skip my trades before that event happens. But next week, every day and on an hourly basis, you are getting this data. So you can completely skip trading next week or you could follow what I've been suggesting that uh, at least skip Monday. Wait till Tuesday and see what Microsoft does. Let's say Microsoft comes out with blue out earning, earnings and that will cause QQQ, SPY, Dow Jones, everything to gap up next morning. You could ride that wave and grab a few call spreads and go bullish on the markets and then save your capital for Friday and see how things worked out that week. So either completely skip trading next week or skip trading on Monday and Tuesday and take your first round of trades on Wednesday morning. I'm not paying too much attention on RRG charts these days because of earnings season. You know, earnings brings lots of, lot of uh, volatility with it and especially when mega cap earnings are lined up. Like one mega cap reporting earnings which beat estimates or raise guidance that can change market direction. So RRG charts are not as reliable during earnings season, but I would still like to show you the chart and um, the chart looks wrong to me, but I'll still show it to you. And the reason it looks wrong to, wrong to me is because as I mentioned in my last week's market outlook, RRG charts, it's a slow moving animal. So it catches up slowly with market movements. And that works great when there is no earnings season uh, in the midst. So if you look at RRG charts today, it's showing every Dow sector, XLF, XLV, XLI, XLE, communications, health, everything is in the red. Now that is clearly wrong because what we saw last week uh, on Friday, Dow Jones made a 700 point move. Um, and so this chart is clearly wrong. So the reason I'm still showing you this chart is to point out that when you have earnings season in play, do not base your trading decisions uh, using RRG charts because it takes a while to catch up. Now let's look at some charts real quick. So if you look at Dow Jones, this, this is a chart of DIA, but uh, if you look at Dow Futures, YM, slash YM, this move on Friday, this was a almost 800 point move. Now, why did that move happen? I have no idea. I mean, the only thing I could see on Friday was that PCE was exactly as expected. So there was like not really any special good news there. And then MMM, which is a big part of uh, Dow Jones, um, came out with blowout earnings. So that definitely contributed to this movement, but an 800 point move, I can't find any explanation for that. But it is what it is, and we have to respect that. If you look at the other indicators on this chart, so RSI has completely changed direction. DMI has also reversed. So this downtrend is over at least for Dow Jones. And as I pointed out earlier, Microsoft is the second biggest component of Dow Jones. So if Microsoft 
comes out with good earnings, raises guidance, then we'll see another gap up here. And Dow Jones, I can almost guarantee you, Dow Jones is going for a new high. So be prepared for that. If Microsoft comes out with good earnings, you could consider bullish trades on Dow stocks, on the leading sectors in the Dow stocks. And like, like I showed you earlier, RRG charts are lagging. So they're good for uh, those times when earnings are not in play. But during earnings, you just have to look at individual sectors. So for example, um, if I just pull up a list of sectors, I, so these are all the sectors. So if you look at the list of sectors, let's start with IBB, uh, biotech, very bullish. Uh, let's look at home builders, very positive. Materials, very positive. Financials, positive. Let's look at staples, positive. And then healthcare, another one, industrials. So what I'm saying is when you're faced with events like earnings or macroeconomic data, which can change market direction instantly in those situations, I don't recommend consulting RRG charts. In those cases, just go through the list of individual sectors and see which sectors are bullish. So for example, Microsoft, let's say Microsoft comes out with good earnings. Dow Jones will gap up. Now next morning, which is Wednesday morning, you want to take some bullish trades. Just go through this sector list yourself and see which sectors are showing bullish momentum and then find stocks in those sectors to take some bull call spreads. Okay, switching back to Dow Jones. So clearly the small pullback we got is over. Again, Microsoft will decide if uh, we if Dow Jones is going for a new high or not. Now let's also uh, look at QQQ. QQQ on the other hand is looking very interesting because although we had 800 point move in Dow Jones, QQQ, yes, it did benefit from that massive price movement, but it's still looking very weak. And if you look at the chart, I mean, they should just tell you that QQQ is still in a downtrend. So tech sector is still in a downtrend. And the only thing is, if you look at the DMI and RSI, because of the huge uh, price movement in Dow Jones, uh, Qs ended up positive. And then you, that's why you see a slight um, uptick in RSI and change in DI minus if you look at DMI. But if you look at the overall chart, if you look at this trend line, it's still pointing down. So obviously, you know, stocks don't go up and down in a straight line. So when you go down, you do, you do have some um, dead cat bounces, but overall the trend is not broken. The, the trend is still down. So that's a very interesting development on QQQ. And also I've thrown Fibonacci retracement levels on this chart um, because if QQQ, which it looks like at least as of now, is in a downtrend, what would be that downside price target where we could expect a bounce? Of course, I have to add this caveat that when earnings are in play, technical analysis is not reliable. But let's take out earnings. Uh, Qs are in a downtrend and 61.8 retracement level, if you look at this level that I'm showing you. So when you look at um, Fibonacci retracements, you know, you have all these levels, 38.2, 50% retracement, 61.8% retracement. So when you see these levels, uh, what level do you, uh, could a stock or ETF bounce? So the most recommended way of using Fibonacci retracements is to find areas of confluence. So find a Fib level, then look at other indicators which actually coincide with that FIB level. And those are the most reliable places where you can see a bounce. In the case of QQQ, on 50% retracement level on Friday, we saw a slight, I wouldn't even call it a bounce. It's a doji candle. So we could just continue downwards. Uh, 
But the next level, which is very interesting, is 61.8% retracement. And also note that this coincides with the long-term support area. So in my opinion, 447 is the downside price target for this pullback, which is actually now, um, we, we actually got a correction, which is amazing that I thought that we'll never get a correction. The way markets have been going up in the last nine months, I had assumed that corrections are a figment of my imagination. We did get a 10% correction. In I wouldn't say it's a sizable pullback. I mean, for me, uh, after the kind of bullish momentum we have seen in the last nine months, uh, I would hope for a 18 to 20% correction, but I'll take 10% because we did get a correction. So if next week, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Apple, all of these come out with good earnings and market reaction is positive. Jews are very close to a point where we will get a massive reversal and we could uh, we could uh, head to new highs. So I am ready. If earnings are good, I will start taking mostly bullish trades and use bear puts as hedges, not the other way around, which I've been doing for many months. I've been taking bearish trades and using bull call spreads as hedges. I'll switch the way I do things, but it depends on earnings and how this chart plays out. Another look at QQQ by using moving averages. So if you look at moving averages, things look really interesting because the moving average crossover, which I've been pointing out, let me switch to a nine month chart. So. Moving average crossovers that I've been pointing out, one here, another one here, and then finally we have another EMA crossover which has happened on July 24th. These crossovers are significant, especially when you're trying to gauge market reversals, whether it's a reversal to the upside or downside, but technicians pay a lot of attention to this. If you look at this, this moving average crossover has happened and which could mean further downside. Of course, if we didn't have earnings in the mix, things would have been easier, but um, they just pay close attention to this. this. As long as this moving average crossover is in play, you could primarily keep taking bear put spreads. So pay close attention to this blue line as long as, as it keeps dumping because the EMA crossover has just happened. You could stay bearish on the queues and tech stocks in general. Okay, we haven't looked at VIX for a long time, but you may have noticed that VIX shot up like literally in the, in the last 10 days from a low of, I don't think it's 10, like I would say 12 level, all the way to 19 in a matter of, of a few days. And this happened bec uh, because of the bearish momentum that we have seen in SPY and tech. But on Friday, we saw a big dropping. So let's see, uh, this trend is still on the upside. So this trend doesn't matter if it's one day down, next day up, doesn't matter. If you've watched my previous market outlooks, you must have noticed that I mentioned this level a lot, 16 level. And I keep saying that as long as VIX stays below 16, you could primarily trade uh, bullish uh, while using bearish setups as hedges or to balance out your portfolio. But once VIX spikes above 16, that is correction territory. So keep a close eye on VIX. Obviously all of this um, doesn't hold as much meaning because this picture can change in a single day after Microsoft, after Meta, after Amazon and Apple earnings. Okay, that's all I have uh, for this week. I have been taking one trade from the previous week and analyzing it for you with my market outlooks, but I feel like uh, those two things don't fit together. So what I'll do is in um, next week, sometimes in the middle of the week, I will take one of the trades from my previous week, analyze it and make a separate video out of that. So I don't plan to combine that trade analysis with my market outlooks as I don't feel that uh, they are a good fit. So that's all I have uh, for you this week. Uh, next week is insane in terms of market moving events. We have FOMC, 
we have tons of jobs data lined up and of course we have mega cap earnings so that's all i have for this week i'll see you guys uh, next week